Hey, Weather Warriors, in this video, we're going to be talking about a massive storm system that's beginning to brew in the central part of the country. Could bring all hazards with it, a major historic winter storm, a severe weather surge, and much more. I'm going to talk about the track timing location and more of this. Some of these maps I could not believe. I'll show you them uh, at the end of the video, the snowfall amounts, too. And uh, one other thing is comment below how much snow you have so far this winter. Uh, I'd like to see how much people have and also subscribe if you like detailed educational weather forecast breakdowns just like this. These are for educational purposes. Let's get right into it. We're going to track this hour by hour. And as a storm chaser, this one is really fascinating to me as we have some severe weather potential for the southern plains. There was severe weather out here in Minnesota and Iowa here Wednesday, so it's uh, firing up pretty early, pretty far north. Now let's get right into it here. Saturday, this is around 9Z, so Zulu time in ter terms of central time, that's about 4 a.m. Now, <clears throat> you're going to see a nice little low pressure system develop right here in the Texas Panhandle. The blues are the snows and the greens are the rains. You're going to get a conveyor belt that goes from east to west and south to north that goes right into this cold air mass. This 540 line is something you want to watch. This is the rain to snow line, okay? And as that moisture slams into it, we could be dealing with some pretty heavy snow. <clears throat> Saturday morning is when this thing gets going. The wind is going to kind of follow those black lines, the isobars, the low pressure system. Look at that, 1,008 millibars. But watch as we get towards the afternoon. This thing blows up. This is around Saturday at 1 p.m. now. I mean, look at this here. The low pressure system, 1,001, it's starting to deepen. When it goes lower, that means it's strengthening. And those black lines getting tighter together, that's windy conditions coming up and around this low pressure system. Just off the deck, and I'm going to show you this in a second, there's 50, 60 knots blowing out from the gulf, bringing in moisture. There's also a conveyor belt of moisture getting kicked in. And we're really talking some serious moisture supply in northern Colorado, southern Wyoming, western Nebraska, and parts of Kansas around this time. Heavy snowfall rates an inch or so an hour up there in uh, northern Colorado, southern Wyoming. As we head towards Saturday afternoon here, this is where it gets really interesting. Okay, there's a trend that I've also noticed in the models. I'll talk about that in a second. It's very important. Look at the low pressure system right here. Denver is located so somewhere up in that region right there, north uh, central parts of Colorado there. This area right here is going to have some serious dry air getting kicked into this thing and because of that the southwest you know near that dry line that and also that southwest uh flow that gets kicked in with these things that's going to shut off the snowfall potential just near and south of that low pressure system where this develops is key because it could make or break the snowfall amounts for people like denver if this goes any far north Denver is out of the historic snowfall amounts. It'll end up in Wyoming. So that's a very key feature we're going to have to watch here. We're talking just a few miles of difference here, 50, 100 miles, okay? Sunday, or this is Saturday night at 7 p.m. You'll notice a nice band of thunderstorms that develops from Texas to Oklahoma to Kansas. We'll go over the severe potential in a second here. So do I think it's going to be major or just isolated? We'll go over that in a second. But a nice tail of moisture. You can see that getting swirling right into this. And that rain to snow line. <clears throat> Not overly deep. You can see it's actually up here, uh, the rain to snow line. But then there's another one right here. So this is the storm generating its own cold air. It's not going to be particularly cold around this thing. You know, you think of a blizzard, it might be you have a huge cold air mass behind it. There's just enough cold air back here for some heavy, wet snow, but it's not overly strong, okay? But because the moisture supply is so heavy, you could be dealing with one to three inch per hour snowfalls in parts of Wyoming, Colorado, and western Nebraska. To the east of that, it's going to be too warm. It's going to be rain for most of Nebraska. Here's a Saturday around 6Z. Okay, this is a little after midnight now around midnight just a little bit after you can see uh, this uh, line of thunderstorms moves to the eastern plains eastern texas oklahoma kansas 
a little bit early for this time of year for Kansas, but there could be a couple of thunderstorms. Uh, where this warm front is, generally to the north of that, you don't get really thunderstorms, particularly early on in the season. It'll probably be more rain for Nebraska and uh, Iowa. Even though it looks heavy, it's probably going to be mostly rain up there. Your thunderstorms will develop along the cold front. Maybe a couple of thunderstorms as far north as the Nebraska-Kansas border. Meanwhile, this low pressure system, look at it now, 998, it's deepening, but it's just stalled out. It is not moving anywhere. It's still in southwest Colorado. So like I said, where that dry slot uh, sets up, where this low sets up is going to be critical because it's just sitting there. If this moves just a little bit farther south, that could put parts of central Colorado in a much higher snowfall amount. But you can see even at Saturday after midnight, snowing like crazy still in north central Colorado, southeast Wyoming in extreme western Nebraska, one to three inch, inch per hour snowfall rates, heavy wet snow, windy conditions. As we head towards Sunday morning, this is around 6 a.m., a very nice band of rain, good swath of moisture along a heavy low-level jet, we're talking 50 to 70 knots of wind, blasting out of the gulf just off the surface. It is crazy, I'll show you that in a second. And the low is just stalled right out there in southwest Colorado. Still tons of snow coming down in parts of Wyoming. And then we go out into Sunday afternoon. And it starts to weaken just a little bit. 996, heavy wet snow in parts of northern Nebraska. But by now it's kind of shearing out. Then you look at Monday morning around 1 a.m. The low finally moves to the east, but it's rising now. So it's actually shearing out. It's weakening. So that moisture supply will kind of spread out, but it'll weaken as well. So less duration of snow out there for parts of northern Iowa, South Dakota, northern Nebraska, and Minnesota. Not as long duration, but perhaps some heavy snow early on. All right, guys, and as we get towards Monday around uh, 1 p.m. or so, this thing is already gone. It's really just sheared out. It could still have some intensity out here in uh, the mid-Atlantic region. There's been some trending in that direction towards Virginia or so. So there could still be some uh, batches of heavy wet snow. Something we'll watch. It's getting a little bit far out there, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in now. We're going to look at some of the details here. There's something uh, I want to I want to show you here. These are the different models here. This is going to be the uh, GFS, and you can see it's actually got that dry slot right through southwest Colorado and it wraps around so that's very key there thunderstorms out ahead of it where those little blotches are from Kansas down into Texas some rain north of there and some extremely heavy snow out here one to two inches uh, maybe three inches per hour out there now something we're gonna have to watch here is uh, the NAM look how big difference the NAM is for the same time this is Sunday morning right after midnight. The NAM is farther to the north and east than the GFS. Here's the NAM right here. It's much farther northeast. NAM doesn't do as well long, long range. But then you look at the Euro, it's also further north. So it's got the main batch of snow all the way up into central Wyoming, Nebraska, South Dakota. This is the thing I wanna show you guys. This is the GFS several runs ago for the same time, just after midnight Saturday. Watch. We're going to fast forward this, and that's going to be the same exact time, but different runs of the GFS. All right, so this is several runs ago. This is a few runs ago. Now, this is a couple runs ago, and uh, then that's our latest run right there. So I'll fast forward it again. Several runs ago, a few runs ago, a couple runs ago, and there's our current run. You can clearly see there is a northward trend, and even northwestward trend, in this storm track. I would not be surprised to see this line up to towards what the Euro has, where the heaviest snow band will line up in southwest Wyoming, up into northwest Nebraska, and extreme north central parts of Colorado. It's a trend we're going to have to watch here. Uh, if you look at the GFS, that's the 850 millibar winds just off the deck. We're clocking in at 50 miles an hour in some areas. That's going to transport moisture like crazy out of the Gulf and support thunderstorms. This is Sunday morning after uh, around uh, 1 a.m. This is the concern here is that dry slot that I was talking about. Look how it wraps right into close to Denver there. If this wraps anymore, it's going to be, the show's going to be over for Denver. It's going to end up just to the north. And sometimes models will underestimate these dry slots. So again, I would not be surprised to see this move just a little bit farther north than it was 
at the moment. And look at this conveyor belt. That's uh, really high relative humidity. Again, we're looking at the moisture at 700 millibars, which is the mid-level. So that's where all the clouds and precip form. And those blues are really plentiful moisture. You can see the two conveyor belts of moisture just coming in right into that Arctic air mass. Thunderstorms in this section, rain in this section, and then snow in this section to the northwest of that low. Those are your different quadrants of the storm system. Vertical velocity, we're looking at the same level, the mid-levels, but we're looking at rising motion. And you can see significant rising motion. Well, what does that mean? Speeds are really high. There's You're going up really quickly in the atmosphere. That means buoyancy, and that supports thunderstorms. So thunderstorms in Kansas and Oklahoma overnight, Saturday into Sunday, and also some rising motion out here in the snow. Well, what does that mean? The potential for some isolated thunder snow exists out there. So wouldn't be surprised to see a flash of uh, lightning maybe. And now we'll look at the severe weather threat. So this is Saturday afternoon around 21Z. I'm just going to show you the overall pattern, then we'll look at the severe weather. This is a bowling ball. This is the trough. Okay, look at this bowling ball trough in the atmosphere. This is the jet stream. You can see that crazy jet streak coming in, spreading out like that, and that's causing divergence, which essentially stretches air out in the upper levels and lift at the surface lifts air at the surface to fill its spot and you got 100 mile an hour net uh, jet little jet streak here in texas oklahoma it is wild very very strong we're gonna look at the friday afternoon here this is the first day of severe weather and here's your front right here okay and there could be thunderstorms all along that red line and just to the east of that red line uh, particularly in south central Oklahoma and eastern Texas. Mostly going to be rain and thunderstorms, but a couple of isolated severe thunderstorms could develop where we have these dew points, and you get your 60 dew points right along this frontal boundary. That's where the best bet for severe weather will be. So probably central Oklahoma out into the Texas panhandle, north central Tex Texas. Uh, the issue with tornado threats, it might be just a rain and hail threat for the most part. It's a little bit cold. These northwest winds might kind of cut off the uh, tornado threat. Usually you want a little bit warmer look than that. The issue is the instability. There's just not a whole lot of instability. We got the moisture. We got the wind shear, that crazy jet stream in the atmosphere. The instability is essentially the buoyancy here. There's just not a whole lot. Some in Texas, some in uh, south central Oklahoma, but mostly 500 thousand or less you need about 750 to get a severe thunderstorm sometimes you can get some with less uh with a really crazy jet streak like we have but it, again that 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 shear will kind of offset the weak instability but i don't expect a crazy outbreak with this but certainly isolated to moderate severe uh mostly isolated severe weather potential as we head towards Saturday, or this is the same day, you can see that jet streak coming into Texas, Oklahoma. That's going to support those thunderstorms. And then uh, as we head towards Saturday, look at this. Here's your frontal boundary right here. And uh, that's a really pretty aggressive one on the GFS. It might be slightly overdone, but very, very strong contrast. Dry and then moist ahead of it. South winds surging out. That would deliver the chance for severe weather from south central Te uh, Kansas down into Oklahoma and into Texas ahead of that frontal boundary. Here's the instability, and you can see uh, Saturday the instability. Again, not terribly strong, but right along that frontal boundary, 500 to 1,000 Cape. There could be some thunderstorms that'll track eastward overnight. So some isolated severe thunderstorms possible in Oklahoma, Texas, and south central uh, Kansas on Saturday. I would say this is the better looking day and more widespread looking day. So maybe uh, a slight risk, enhanced risk that day. You can see that jet streak centered right over that instability. That's going to cause some serious wind shear for those thunderstorms. And as we head towards Sunday... Uh, you can see this frontal boundary moves to the east, good moisture out ahead of it. The GFS is way farther to the east. I think that's overdone. It has issues with these bowling ball type troughs. I think you'll have a severe weather setup right along the Texarkana region and just to the east, right along the state borders there. Instability, not a whole lot Sunday. You know, you, later on with these uh, systems, the, the farther you go into these systems, when they start to shear out, uh, it tends to weaken the instability a bit. You can see a little bit of lifted index in there, and so maybe Louisiana, southern Arkansas on uh, Sunday. Here's your snowfall amounts. Here's the GFS, and this, this is something I can't 
believe here. This is the GFS, and we'll look at the other models here in a second. I'll try to move this out, but North Central Iowa, Northern Nebraska, into South Dakota, into Wyoming, out into Colorado, that's your heaviest snow band, particularly in Southwest Wyoming and North Colorado, where that stalling occurred. That's where your heaviest is gonna be, where the stalling occurs and early on in the life cycle of this system. Because it stalls out here, you know, these low pressure systems don't last forever. If this didn't stall, this would put a major snowstorm for parts of Nebraska and Kansas. But because it stalls, it's gonna sit all the way out here in Colorado. Look at the GFS. This is 10 to one ratio. So it's not even that powdery, it's a wet snow. You're clocking in at 50, 60 inches on the GFS. Now, do I think that'll happen? We'll look at this in a second. Here's the GFS V16, the new GFS. I think I like the amounts on this a little bit better, but I also think the track's a little bit too far south on the GFS V16. It has it on the I-80 corridor. I think that's way too far south. But look at this, 40, 50 inches on there. And then the uh, European, I like the amounts on here as well, and it's farther north. The, the track of the European's pretty good here. Uh, right there is your uh, four to, or six to 12 inches. North central Nebraska, southeast South Dakota, southwest Wyoming, look at that, three, four feet of snow. And it's got Rapid City clocking in at a few feet. That might be a little bit too far north. We'll have to watch that. This will probably be a little bit farther to the south. But you can see Denver, one to two feet, and just to the north of there, three feet. So all of these models are just showing lots of snow. Here's Here it is farther north on the Euro. And uh, right there is your heaviest snow band, Nebraska, South Dakota, Wyoming border, just getting smacked with three to four feet of snow. Here is the GDPS. I can't believe this model. It's got 50, 60 inches. It's overdone. I mean, the, the GDPS always overdoes snow, in my experience. It is just ridiculous on the snowfall amounts. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen, guys. I think it's going to be more your maximum area out here where that stalling occurs. Probably be about one to two feet. Some isolated areas seeing three feet of snow. This is nothing to sneeze at. I mean, this is crazy amounts of snow for this region. And it's March. So, you know, you know, they typically get your heaviest snow in late winter out in that region. Here's the national view. So what does it look like for the rest of the country? Well, it kind of weakens and then redevelops along the East Coast. This is something we're going to have to watch really closely. Still pretty far out, but could get some significant snowfalls in Virginia. We'll have to watch that closely. And uh, it's been trending upwards for that region. Uh, again, uh, the amounts in the, the southwest Wyoming, north central Colorado, northwest Nebraska, extreme southwest South Dakota, one to three feet possible. To the east of that, because it doesn't stall out and it moves a little bit faster and starts to weaken, probably six to 12 inches to six to 10 inches in the maximum area from northern Iowa, northern Illinois into eastern South Dakota. In terms of rainfall amounts, Anywhere in this pink is one inch. Much of the central eastern U.S. or mid-Atlantic region. And then uh, this yellow area is much as three to four inches. Look at this. So zooming in here, anywhere ahead of this low pressure system, two to four inches of rain. So tons of rain, good for that drought because there's a big drought in the plains and west. So stay tuned, guys. We're going to definitely have more updates on this video or on the storm system, more videos coming out. Subscribe because these are best viewed when they're hot off the press. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and we'll see you soon.